Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tier No, the Lessons of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokulover, and we're continuing on with our great campaign, playing as Oryx Commissariat Central Africa, but self affirmation. Mwenza Vita had been asking questions all his life. When he was six or seven, he asked why the white family lived in the big house, while the darker skinned families liked his, like his lived in huts and shacks. When he was ten, he asked why if his people had gods before. The missionaries were so eager to replace them. And when he was fourteen, he asked why he'd have to work in the mines for several hours a day while the engineers sat in an air-conditioned office for half the time. And the answer was always meant with the same, that by the circumstances of his birth, Mwenze was inferior. It never sat well with Mwenze, but he eventually accepted it. Some things he couldn't change, he thought. The master dudist, or, uh, <clears throat> group, said they will rule the world now, ruled over him and his, and his. He was stuck doing their bidding with no say in the matter, but that was just how it was. An Aryan was a good for ruling the world, a native like him was good only for lifting a hundred weight of dirt. Mwenze thought the army would be more of the same, black grunts doing hard, dirty work while the, while the white officers sat under their pavilions miles away, but the longer he served, the more he, the world changed his mind. Time in the army gave him French mercenaries dragging a truck along the mud like any native and them asking for his help. Time in the army gave him natives like he charging towards a hail of bullets while their white SS comrades cowered in a ditch. So much for the fearless master uh, group of people. And in time... And in the army gave him and his native men victories against the white Americans and South Africans. Far from giving him more of the same, the army instead gave Mwenze strength and pride. Maybe the white man was wrong, Mwenze thought. The army showed him natives can be just as talented and accomplished as white people. Perhaps more so. They can be mechanics, tank drivers, perhaps even pilots, and then they can lead from the force as well. Perhaps after the war, Mwenze would find his newfound pride, and perhaps he had the skills and weaponry to back up everything he said. A native ruled Central Africa? Preposterous! And we're currently finishing up draw plans, which we still need to do, fortify the border. If you like to read this, please go right ahead. But we read that at the end of last episode, which right now I did want to show you that apparently um, we have a big old circuit here. Look at this. Like, I haven't been doing like, most of this off screen, just a, just a tiny bit, but like that's a big encirclement already. So yeah, I'm not sure what's going on, but at this point, just go right on ahead. I mean, yeah, there's a border there, but still, like this is... The AI is doing quite well for themselves, but Reich's Commissar Siegfried Müller nervously fiddled with a pen, laid back in a chair with his feet on the desk as he was waiting for the map to be unrolled. He glanced at his accomplices in the matter of planning the war. Wilhelm Ritter von Thoma left to his, to his left, proudly displaying the spotless olive green uniform with all those redundant medals. Rolf Steiner directly to his opposite, thoughtfully scratching his chin, certainly Müller began flipping the pen between his hands. We all agreed that the only way to win this war is concentrating our infantry at the front lines here. He tapped the pen on the map, and here, another tap. I abnegate, uh, 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 Reich's Commissar von Thomas stood up, adjusting his stainless uniform. While these positions may be wisely chosen, I cut or or I out all of all those present can produce the most logical approach. He peered over his two witnesses. Mind me saying this, but the Panzer Truppe will be key to our victory. You're obviously forgetting about Northern Africa so high light heartedly, just because it wasn't your glory. He smirked to himself, the only the only means we should feasibly apply is a panzer, reliable, unrelenting, Steiner coughed, cutting him off. Yes, we've heard your ramblings all over again. We know they are swift and efficient. They were key to our victory and crewed by able men. They are deadly war machines. Well, well, but you have seen our arsenal. It's still the same generation you used in Northern Africa. I propose we use helicopters instead. He went to the balcony, opening the curtains to reveal the great helicopter in the yard. There, everything a panzer is, but better. Müller took a miniature helicopter, sweeping it across the map of Africa. They are undeniably good for hunting, but those things weren't built for wars. Men are built for wars. They are reliable and efficient, just give the right man a rifle and the wonder unfolds. He took the miniature of a soldier and deployed it at the South African border. This was just the beginning of a verbal battle, dragging on late into the night. The uncivilized part of it, when drinks got involved, is much too shambolic for to, to follow for now. Orders for now, just fight, it's a war after all. Oh crap, no, that's not good. That's really not good. Uh, head on down here. Go, 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 go. And Leonard Mulamba, thank you for playing. Thank you very much. He's a jungle rat. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cut him off, cut him off, cut him off, cut him off. You. Uh, keep him in place for now, because we're actually doing relatively okay. Go, 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 go. In, 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 in. Get in there before they all retreat. We got him, we got him. Woo, baby, we got him. Get back in there, sons. You sons of guns, you get all right back in there. That is five divisions. Five enemy divisions cut off, and now we've been defeated. God dang it. You know what? Why? Guys. Why? You could have encircled them. You could have killed them all off. But you chose not to. Actually, you guys. Go right there. Keep going. Do not let up. Do not let up. That's still six divisions now. Nice. Thank goodness we got them. We got them, everyone. 
Oh, we could cut him off here. That'd be so great. But even attacking here would be good as well. We've lost 2,000. That's not too bad. And we've killed off 85,000. The wreck of MS Jakarta. <clears throat> move, move, move. Peter raced across the deck, sidestepping ruined piles of metal and wood. Behind him were a dozen other crew members from a dozen different nationalities. Dutch, French, Filipino, crew, and more besides. But all of them were equals below the MS Jakarta's deck. At least they had been. Nobody caught the mine that blasted the bow apart, but it doomed the cargo ship the instant it announced its explosive presence. Its containers full of steel. In a matter of minutes, the Jakarta will settle with the trees underneath the Congo Sea. Pierre, the first mate's name had been a source of many running jokes on board, was already by the life raft. As he undid and not the ship tilted, and Pierre lost his balance. The raft slipped overboard with a stray rope uh, looped around his ankle. The Frenchman barely had any time to scream before he vanished overboard. Peter went numb. The raft had been drifting away further from Jakarta. No time to think twice. Peter turned around, glancing at his fellow shipmates. He looked back over his side into the murky waters and took a deep breath before you leap. Or look before you leap. The Katanga Line. As you can see, it's built of specifications, General Field Marshal Rolf Steiner said, pointing to the thin dotted line of bunkers and outposts that snaked across the plains of Katanga. The positions are ready to be staffed at any time if such an emergency becomes necessary. He looked left and saw the Rex Commissar Muller was pleased. Apparently, this view of the defensive line from the helicopter was a good one for him, but Steiner was looking at this from another angle. I don't know if it's good enough to be honest, he said. Betting Muller would be in a good enough mood to not go after him for that statement, they are pretty sparse and spread out. Muller left. Oh, it's plenty. The landscape isn't that great to traverse anyways, and we'll have a bunch of outside circumstances that'll work in our favor. Outside circumstances? What do you think strategically, Ding Dong? Left Muller. We have all the barouts in land between South Africans and us, and the terrain is poorer there as well. By the time they run into us, these fortifications will convince them to bad word off and attack the other two. They have not larger fronts anyways. They have larger fronts. Preferably the Takute. Shank doesn't need the trouble. But should we expand it, sir? Asked Steiner. We still have territory near Leopoldville that needs to be defended. If they get near Leopoldville, Sudwest Africa's bad word, and the war is as good as lost. Muller picked up a rifle now. Enough inspection. Let's shoot a cheetah. Let's smile. Let us smile and impassable terrain be your umbrella. Nice. The logistical cluster bad word. The Arbor first reports are coming in. They are honest. Our logistical situation is, to put it simply, a disaster. How Muller very well for once put it. A gosh darn bad word, bad word. Our men of ammo and fuel barely lasting a few minutes of combat, and the military production sites are simply too few to allow for any substantial increase in production, and the infrastructure too small and vulnerable to enemy attacks to ensure that any meaningful provision reaches the front line. We need help. We desperately, desperately need help. Even though we're actually doing, I would say, quite well. Screw it. Let's go boost this. Boost it. Boost it. Boost it. Boost it. And do we have anything to do with our PP? The internal situation, I guess. Native tension? We could probably lower that, actually. Well, I guess we don't have enough guns. Uh, hire natives? You know, we can do that one. Why not? I don't think natives are... Ooh, uh, I kind of would like this one. But it doesn't really matter about investors at the current moment, so... The last sighting. A stormy night in the South Atlantic, a Sudwest African patrol boat monitoring the waters off the coast of Alexander Bay is periodically hit by waves from the bow, washing over the vessel. In the lights of a thunderstrike, one of the crew spots something in motion to the captain. The sighting is confirmed to his horror. He starts relaying an emergency message to the Kriegsmarine Command in Luritz. Many vessels, various types, marking unknown. He tries to give off as much information as he's able to until a broadside of a Mark 42 guns ends his abrupt uh, broadcast permanently. The report, though brief and vague, sets off a scramble across Africa as a massive effort to confirm the report is undertaken. Eventually, an aerial reconnaissance flight returns with pictures that send an enormous wave of dread throughout the entire shield. There can be no doubting it now, the Americans have arrived with their sixth fleet. Oh boy, that is not good. Gone is any semblance of German naval superiority. Shattered are any dreams of ending this war through a quick and daring naval invasion of the Cape. The seas belong to the cruisers and frigates of the American Navy. Its skies through the flights of aircraft lined on the decks of the carriers. The fleet is of such a size that no one would dream of taking it on with the ships of the shield. <clears throat> In one stroke, it appears the Americans have achieved victory at, at sea for the South African War. But that war will be won on land. Keep going, keep going. We're beating the crap out of them. Keep beating the snot out of them. Actually, you guys go right here. Keep pushing down. Take as much territory as we can for now. We've lost 3,000. We've killed off almost 90,000 South Africans. Now, obviously, it doesn't mean too much when the Americans get involved, but still. Our goal is to bleed them dry, bleed them dry, bleed them dry. And just destroy the divisions. Go down, go down. Help them out, help them out. We're going to be running out of tanks here, probably, too. 
the state of her planning. Now give me a bad word pause. How often do I need to say this, Rolf? Yes, helicopters to transport the troops. No helicopters being a strategical concentration of the war effort. Muller had enough of this rambling. For days they sat in his office discussing how to plan the war against South Africa. But this time, the Reich's commissar was determined to get a decision before the arguing developed into the battlefield of a drunkard again. Von Tommel paced through the office, his uniform having become shaggy in the last days. Panzers, my friends, why won't you just accept this? They are reliable, unrelenting. No, Muller and Steiner exclaimed in unison. Why not? Von Tommel wanted to know. It was like they rejected him out of pure concept. Having said it again, Muller con concerned him, or cornered him. A panzer is nothing but infantry, but infantry is enough without a panzer. Probably they are better off even considering the panzers we have at disposal. He stared at the map. I will keep an eye with it. There and there, a huge concentration of infantry and they'll be wearing within the day. Siegfried, you love your helicopters. He sounds pleading. Base our strategy upon them and the enemy will be unable to counter our swift strikes. When Toma and Steiner argued on why their means was the best as a strategy to defeat the South Africans and possibly the Americans, respectively. The Reichskommissar, meanwhile, went to his old carabiner from the retainers off the wall. Or took it. They didn't even notice that he aimed at them, going from one to the other. A shot. Splinters flew. A glass spilled on the table and the map. Muller hit the table. He took all of his zeal and started to exclaim in a voice, deep and strong yet coarse all around, from all the arguing. This is why we ought to be doing. Bad word, shooting at the enemy. We obviously can't agree on how to organize the shooting, so for now, just stick with shooting at all. We'll soon see enough which strategy will win us the war, but therefore, we have to fight after all. The rest will be discussed then. Now, out with you. Those were clear enough orders. Know your enemy will defeat him, but to know them, you must fight them. Conscript the mercenaries. Hundreds, if not thousands, of mercenaries are employed all throughout Zinthra, Africa. Trained veterans, expert in urban and rough terrain combat. They'll make fine at least for a burgeoning army. At least if we can pay their price. So it's worth a try. We should contact the largest bands and see whether they can strike a deal with us to serve as part of our armed forces in the event of a war. Perhaps even create some, several crates of diamonds. As part of the offer, we'll do the trick. We gotta go, go, go before the Americans. Oh, the Americans have already shown up. God dang it. Oh yeah, they're definitely, they've definitely shown up. That is not good. This is definitely a mess. Uh, guys, I, I, can you not help out there? I think that'd be great if you could help out here. I'll push, push, push him out, push him out, push him out, push him out. There goes Himmler. Holy crap, Cape is already taken out. Holy smoky daddies. I'm going to stop the attack and kind of reassess ourselves here too, so. Um, go in, go in. You guys need help out because we're taking too many losses. Okay, so let's go ahead and reassess ourselves a little bit. They literally have no port left. Wow, that is actually kind of impressive. As long as we get East London, that's all we need. Go and prepare. We need to prepare. Um, Blomfontein? Not bad. Just go ahead. Get some stuff organized. We need way more anti-tank. We need motorized and tanks. But... What? The war is won! Oh, Reichskommissar Müller has made a sudden disheartening realization. Despite all preparations and planning for this very night, he had only been on the first drink of the night, unfortunately. However, the bounty laden within his plentiful schedule will surely be harvested later, Müller realized, as his battalion had reached the rallying... Dr Point drawn out on the war map. <laughs> As the bombardment that had torn apart the city finally ceased, Miller hopped upon a massive boulder and shouted to his battalion, Gentlemen of Central Africa, The Reich has tasked us for a mission, and now we get to employ it as dutifully and properly as possible. Henceforth, you shall carry out these orders, go into that city with whatever other German you find in that field, shoot those American dudes, and let's have ourselves a night on the town. Miller's mercenary company roared with compliance, rushing forth into the African night towards the burning city. After several hours of bored waiting, a lone soldier appeared before Miller, yelling, Sir, Reich's Commissar! Sir, Müller spat out of his drink, startled by the soldier's sudden salute. Apology, sir. I was sent to inform you that the city is captured for the glory of the Reich, by the accomplishments of the men and of yourself and the Reich's commissars, Schenk and Hutig. Müller looked upset at the soldier, saying, Yeah, whatever, go bad word off to some other plane. As he began walking off, preparing himself for his planned schedule inside the city, Müller's party raged as intensely as the fires that consumed the livelihoods of thousands, taking refuge into one of the blown apart taverns of the city. Müller and his men pranced about, chasing after the th free bottles of booze and the highly exotic African narcotics. Ooh. The men took a moment of calm amidst the storm. As all that filled the air were the embers of burning foundations, flesh and bone, the smoke of cigars, even just for a moment. Suddenly a laugh, then another. Soldier laugh, followed by another until the entire bar was laughing. Then at that moment when was when the tavern truly roared to life with laughter, booze and drugs, crap open the champagne. Is that it? Is that really it? The South Africans already capitulated? Holy crap! That's still 64. It's barely 64. Is Nixon still in the office? 
Holy cr They already lost before they could even get out of office. But a call to all soldiers of fortune in Africa. And so I ask you, one and all, who will stand with me in this hour of need, this day of glory? Who will join me in this most dangerous and profitable game of all? Who will come with me to war? At first, not a man stirred among the audience. Gone was the music, the festivities, and the jovality that usually accompanied these gatherings, but the trademark smoke clouds loomed, still loomed large over the mercenaries as they puffed away in the darkness. The smoke swirled among the beam of light emanating from the overhead projector, casting an eerie haze over each of the slides. The final image showed a grand par pa parade of Central Africa's finest SS divisions down the streets of Leopoldville with Mueller's palace towering over the background. Mixed with the smoke, it looked like the palace was on fire, and considering what happened next, it might as well have been. Bob Denner was the first to rise. He ashed his cigarette, walking out of the room, laughing the whole way. Mike Horror rose next, but much to everyone's surprise, moved forward to shake Mueller's hand. You dirty harlot, you bad word traitor, they're our own people, roared Duck Vanderlyn. Oh, Duck Vanderlyn, yeah. The young South African. Horror chuckled. We're defending your people, you stupid Afrikaner, and killing mine. It's what the degenerates deserve, flicking the uh, dark-skinned man is equal to the white. And the last time I checked, we're both Central Africans now. Think about which way the wind is blowing, kid. While the Anglos warred in English, a similar argument played out in French. Goosens, the hot-headed Belgian, asked about, asking about how his compatriots could march with the SS divisions to conquer another people considering the Burgundian occupation of La Patrie. A Krakor and Shram calling them a coward as they thought of their vast estates and suddenly bright prospects of accelerating the climbs of the corporate ladder. Mueller couldn't help or keep track of the polygot conversation swirling around him. It was becoming increasingly clear he couldn't keep track of any, much of anything. When the dust settled, some of the mercenaries remained committed to money above all else. But more than that, he'd hoped that she showed some principles after all and disappeared back into their own private wars. A glorious coalition of the willing assembled at last. So, we won the war already. We didn't even get to do any of this stuff. Military bad word. Things didn't go as planned. Our native militias barely know where the trigger is, and that they shouldn't point the barrel and at this themselves, while half of our mercenaries simply vanish, refusing any part in the war. In short, our army is a bad word, and a royal one to boot. We desperately need a full reform, or the entire Rox Commissariat will simply melt like butter in the desert of the evening of anything larger than a pub brawl. We killed off 90,000 South Africans. I mean, we did, like, we did really well. Like, let's be real, we did quite well. But, bro, like... Yeah, that, that's... Uh, Jesus Christ. There you go. They're so pissed off, huh? Um, I mean, look at that. The U.S. Embassy in Cape Town was forced to evacuate. Um, well, I mean, that's definitely going to get kick, kick Nixon out of office. Can you still do these focuses? God, that's a beautiful flag. Anyways, um, no, I guess I'll do them. The South African Summit. South Africa's lost. You already lost South Africa. That was holy crap. I I was not expecting that whatsoever. I was expecting us to have a little bit more of a drawn out because the American Navy finally showed up, but holy crud. Like we like I wanted that's why I began the episode with not even finishing that one focus we did. Um No wonder they said you should do hard mode. Jesus. Like I can't even do uh you know the fortify the border one. We were still on draw plans from the end of last episode. So Holy crud. Siegfried will handle this, I guess. Or, we can't do that when the state of our forces, because we, we're, we're not at war. Siegfried Müller just finished the review of another part of the Central African military force, ready to be sent to the front lines. He sighed when he was done and wished the officer cadre much luck as his aides eagerly took the last of their notes. Then he went to the assembled high command and called his aides in the endeavor to his side. I actually shouldn't have done this with every single one of our units. There are simply too many, and the front lines are very demanding. However, it seems there's no other way. He looked at one of his aides and grabbed for the documents he was holding gingerly. Miller opened the folder of the review and ran through the lines with his finger. That is already the third consecutive company that is lacking in more than a dozen occasions equipment-wise, and hasn't conducted proper officer training in more than a year. General Bowman shamefully looked at his feet. Uh-oh. Mulamba took on a concerned look, and Steiner pr protectively crossed his arms in front of his chest. Only Wilhelm von Tema, or Toma, Dare to speak. A shameful display indeed. I have always been begging the General Bureau for a proper review of the forces by an apt representative of yours. Mueller cut him off angrily. I didn't ask for your opinion. He took a turn on his heels as the next unit assembled in front of him, neatly prepared by the commanding officers. We have so many of them. He took a glance behind. I'm not complaining because of the chore and pain it is to review them, but because I don't want so many wastefully to die. Then he strode to do his duty. Like, bro. Like, we should have done hard mode then. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I don't want these guys to be too pissed off, so... Um, I don't want to lose weekly stability. It's already not that great. Like, there's nothing we can do now. I mean, I love the collection, and apparently, and, 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 oh, a little bit of lag. Like, Mueller will, or Hutig will eventually, like, coup all of us and form the big old shield, but, um, 
I'm not really sure what to do now. Uh, Siegfried will handle this. Alex Komisar has gotten tired of inaction and defeatism, and decided to personally join the war effort. His personal helicopter is geared and ready to depart at any moment, and the troops find courage in knowing that their leader is ready to share the danger with him shoulder to shoulder. Not only that, but he's actually started worrying about the general state of the army. It was darn time, I dare say, and has planned a meeting with his most trusted advisors to find a comprehensive strategy. Let's hope he doesn't suggest dressing up as wild animals like last time. Um, I'm gonna see. I think for this one, what I'm gonna do, well, I guess we have to be war. Oh, we have to be war with America. I want to just like do some of these. Like, because there's nothing we can do now. Like, we're locked out of all this stuff. The Secret War Mobile Warfare. Trucks of the Battlefield. I like that. Ad adopt the logistics for the terrain. Central African Panzers. Fetch some more. Buy Panzers from Ost Africa. Ost Africa needs to exist to do this one, apparently. Gain some ex expertise. Expertise. Mercenary Engineers. And the North African Strategy. And that looks great and all, but... We literally can't do that. Hire natives. There you go. Status quo is nice. Um, there's another strategy over here as well, if you want to read about that. Cut the tap. The infantry is the core of the army. Mercenary expertise. Oh! Oh, and here we go. Uh, let's keep going through some of these, though. Hire more natives. Uh, promote the native SS, which looks really cool. Native divisions, awesome. And we've built a stockpile ourselves. Because I want to show you what these are all are, so there you go. And then we have the perfect soldiers of Central Africa, because the men will never... Because men will win the war. Yes, they will. Or Steiner strategy with helicopter combat. I love helicopters so much. Suit vest Afrikaner stockpiles. Import every advisor for Windhoek. And mass air training programs. Central African Luftwaffe. Mobile air base modernizations. Repurpose Leopold Ver Airport. Air supply logistics. And combat bombing campaigns in South Africa. Um, we'll read about this very soon, but. Uh, sell guns to our enemies. Inventory management. Clarify the situation. Ask for more guns. Get inspirations from Sweet West Africa's books. Uh, Central Africana chain of command. Deliver the reports. Uh, send mercenaries away. Hire fresh mercenaries. Ooh. Ask a favor. We won't miss them. Hire untrained mercenaries and natives. Convince the others. Trained mercenaries. The Dena plan. And the Cameroon defense plan. And Roth will handle the rest. But breaking news has arrived today from Leopoldville. Siegfried Müller, the longtime Rex Commissar of Central Africa, has fled his colonial domain. Oh no! This development comes uh, mere after hours the murder of Müller's delegation in Ost an Ost African dinner, in which all attendees were slaughtered by Hutek and his SS. Müller's lack of attendance had spared his life, and Hutek's blind fury was a blessing to the Rex Commissar, who soon inevitably caught wind of the massacre in Quillemain. The Rex Commissar, fearful that SS agents were likely en route to finish their task of high profile slaughter, wasted no time in returning to Leopoldville from his hunt. Without so much as a stop to gather belongings, Müller boarded an air aircraft des destined for Germany, suddenly eager to leave the African continent behind. As Müller soared back to Germany, and Reichskommissar Schenk lays dead upon the floor of a dining hall in Quillemain, Hans Hütte's conquest of the African Reichskommissariats appears to be inevitable. Those inside the borders of Central Africa and Angola look to the street or the future with despair as SS banner parades through our streets. Heil Hütig. Perhaps they decided to leave Africa. Oh, we could become them? Load Battle or MZMB? So they just straight up annex us. Honestly, this is weird. Okay, so we won that so incredibly fast that even the German Civil War is still raging on. Even Hadrish is not dead yet. What's the difference? Hi, Hutig? What is this one? What's load? Well, I guess that's going to be it for us. Um, I mean, I've already played Hutig before, so I don't really want to play him again. Maybe I'll play him again someday, but... Okay, with with us winning the civil the Afri South African War so fast, um, he's going to collapse even faster probably. Like, there's one strategy that some people try to explain to me, like when I played as Hutig, but you don't want to end the war. Just do not end the war and get through your focus tree as much as possible. That will literally make you able, give you enough time to be able to actually go through your entire tree. So, I I, I love Siegfried Müller. He was a lot of fun. He was a great a lot of fun. I I want to keep playing as him, but there's just nothing else here. So. I guess it's going to be the end of the campaign. I, I really enjoyed my time in Central Africa. I didn't enjoy all the redoing of events for the trophies for the animals. But other than that, I loved Central Africa. I love the investors. I love Hitler stuff. That was a that was just great. It was great. But and investors and hunting and just it just it felt so kind of nice. But don't quote me on that. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video and the campaign, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great...
rest of your day.